I was reading a, a great article this week um, about Mahatma Gandhi and for those of you that have listened to any of the stuff I do or watched any of the things I've done you know that I am a big fan of Mahatma Gandhi I really like his discipline and what he achieved in his life what he achieved in the world well, what I like about him most of all was his honesty and he brought great solace to me and he brings great solace to lots of people because he, he even when he was in his 60s he still talked and wrote publicly in his own um, magazines about the mistakes that he made um, so I thought that would be a good subject for this podcast I like to get, keep things current um, and, and as a self-help kind of writer and as a kind of a guy that's on the path and you know search him mostly search him within um, and sometimes like into I like to read books and stuff same as we all do <clears throat> um, I thought it would be good to talk about forgiveness um, but not so much about forgiving other people because I think a lot of the people I meet are good at doing that but they're not very good at forgiving themselves and especially people that teach this stuff um, they're very very hard on themselves I know I'm hard on myself and I don't think a lot of the people I read are, are, um, are as forthcoming um, as I want to be and as Gandhi is you read someone like Gandhi you think or, or Gurdjieff and you think god these people were so honest but I think it, this is what I loved about Watch My Back Watch My Back is a very honest book it talks about fear it talks about the fact that um, this is a guy that works on the nightclub door um, he's been in lots of fights which was me um, but it still feels fear and I think people think that someone like me who writes books who does talks doesn't make mistakes doesn't err uh, but if you knew the people around me, they would tell you that I do. You know, even last week or the week before last, I had so much rage in me. Believe me, so much rage. I had to sit in my, uh, I've got a place in London and I sat in the bathroom downstairs and I had, it took every ounce of my self-control to control this rage. It's just something that had happened in my life um, and I felt this enormous rage um, and it took every part of my self-control and my knowledge and my learning to stop myself from acting on that rage and going out and doing something silly. So the reason I want to talk about this is because people but when I used to read lots of different gurus and lots of different self-help people, you just think, God, these guys are perfect and I'm so inadequate. Um, but what I found myself is that none of us are perfect. We're all inadequate. All of us are weak. All of us are scared. All of us make mistakes. All of us err. I'm doing it all the time. I'm making mistakes all the time. It doesn't mean that I'm not on the path. It means that I'm on the path. And when I make mistakes, God or the universe corrects me and I'll get a dose of guilt or I'll get angry with myself or I'll feel shame, whatever it is. I tend to like to try and write about it and talk about it. I'm lucky because I've got people around me that help me to do that. So one of the biggest things I learned when I went on the door was that before I went on the door, I thought I'm the only person in the world that feels scared. I felt scared all the time. I felt scared of life. I was like Mesner climbing Nanga Pabat solo. You know, he, he reached a point. Mesner was this amazing, amazing uh, mountain climber. And he looks like he's made out of granite. And if you watch him do an interview, you just think, God, this guy is so amazing. He's so stoic. He's so brave. This guy is fearless. Uh, and that's what you see when you look at him, this man of experience. And who interestingly said that he didn't beat the mountain. The mountain let him climb it. Um, and he said he was halfway up Nanga Babat and he was in a tent and the wind was blowing and he said he was terrified. He was scared to go up, he was scared to go down, he was scared to stay where he was. He said at that point he was afraid of living. He said he was so scared that he was crying for his wife. And when I read that in the beginning of his book, it's called Nanga, Nanga Pabat Solo, N-A-N-G-A, -A -A, Nanga Pabat Solo. Um, 
I just thought oh, it's so refreshing to hear this man of granite talk about his weaknesses, and I think that's you know when I've when I've worked with AA and I've you know been to you know when I used to work at the uh, uh, addiction centre, one of the great things I love there was they said we're only as we're only as um, sick as our secrets, and these people like these addicts that used to sit round you know sex addicts. Uh, alcoholics, um, gambling addicts, uh, people that are addicted to all sorts of different things. They would sit there and they would talk about where they were and what they were doing and they would reveal their secrets and they would do it as a way of releasing the pressure. And that's what I loved about Gandhi. That's what I loved about, um, you know, uh, Mesna on the mountain. It's okay to be scared. It's okay to be terrified. It's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to err. But we need to forgive ourselves. We need to recognise that we've made a mistake. And we need to forgive ourselves. It's no good me sitting here, you know, talking to you and, and uh, you know, still feeling angry at myself because two weeks ago I was, um, you know, full of rage. Or because a week ago I felt jealousy. Or because, um, you know, because I went on a sex site or on a porn site or, you know, because I made a mistake. The, the thing we need to do is we need to recognise that we're not perfect, that we do make mistakes. And I had this, <laughs> had this even recently, I'm 52, and found myself angry, bored, and drifting onto a porn site on the internet. This is me. I write about this stuff. I write books about this stuff. And I still fell into the same trap. And my wife says to me, what are you doing? What are you, what are you doing? It's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to err. It's okay to, you know, to fall off. You, the universe will guide you. We're like guided missiles. We will, we will uh, get direction by erring. So when we err, we will get directed by God or get directed by the universe or get directed by our conscience. Obviously, we don't want to keep making mistakes, but from what I from what I can exp uh, from from my own life and from my own experience and from my own uh, study, I've not met anybody yet, anybody that does not err. And like I said, Gandhi's my hero. Gandhi had three hundred and fifty million followers, um, and was still making mistakes in into his sixties, still making mistakes because he had a Gandhi had a real uh, addiction to sex and he was still making mistakes um, with sex in his 60s. He was still making mistakes with judgment in his 60s. He was still making mistakes with his family in his 60s. You know, he was a man of contradictions, but he was a man that was looking for God, which is what I'm doing. It's, I guess it's what you're doing. We're all trying to find something. And we all know that it's not gonna, we're not gonna find it in a book. We're not gonna find it in a podcast. You know, we're not gonna find it, you know, uh, from a guru we're going to find it by going into ourselves it's in us god is in us and we are guided through our mistakes so sometimes we're closest to god when we make mistakes but often we are at our most harsh when we make mistakes so we can make a mis we can make a mistake it'd be, it'd be a mistake that somebody else might make and we would just say forget it you know i, I remember when i crashed my car uh, this really nice jag and uh I was pulling out of a car park and I looked across and I saw this, uh, I, I call it, um, what did I call it? Um, my vanity crash. I had a, two or three vanity crashes. I looked over, I saw this girl and she was really in nice shape and I suddenly had this rush of vanity came through me and I thought, oh yeah, this girl's really attractive and she was with a, with a lad and I just thought I'm showing off in my car. Crash, I hit a post. Now, if my wife had hit a post in the car and wrecked the front of the car, it took about two months to fix this car and a lot of money, um, I'd have just said, don't worry, it's a mistake. We all make mistakes. Move on. But with me, I beat myself up for about two weeks until in the end I just thought, I've got to be as forgiving of myself as I am of the people around me that I love. I would forgive my son anything. I would forgive my wife anything. I would forgive my mum anything. I would forgive people anything. I pray for people and they make a mistake. But with myself, and I'm guessing that you know you are probably the same, you mangle yourself when you make a mistake, you batter yourself when you make a mistake, you cannot forgive yourself. But if we don't forgive ourselves, we're no longer living in the present. God wants us to live in the present. 
or the universe wants us to be in the present. Everything happens in the present moment. Everything is transmuted in the present moment. So this, this video is about forgiveness, but about forgiving yourself, forgiving yourself for making mistakes and recognizing that this is just from my experience that God is in your errors. When you make errors, you feel shame and anger and guilt because God is in the errors. God is trying to say to you, expand your virtues, contract your vices. Uh, you're getting instruction, not from me. You're not getting instruction from my books. You're not getting instruction um, from your guru, or from your iman. You're getting instruction directly from God or directly from the universe, whatever you would like to call it. I, I prefer to call it God. So when we make mistakes, we are getting instruction directly from the divine. And that's how Gandhi worked. I was really inspired when I read this book about Gandhi when he was saying, um, you know, in his 60s, he was, he was still struggling um, with sex. He was still struggling with the concept of arousal, of physical arousal. His concept was that we have to really contract our senses, pull our senses in like a turtle that pulls its legs in. And when we do that, our consciousness expands. But he was still struggling with it. And what he was saying to me in his book, and he wrote about this in, in, a, in, a, in one of his... Um, he, had a, he had his own newspaper. He wrote about it in the newspaper. What he was saying was, I'm possibly at the top of my game, probably at the top of my game, um, and I'm still making mistakes, and God is instructing me. God, no less, is instructing me through my mistakes. So we need to not get too caught up when we make errors. We need to get not, not too caught up if we find ourselves, you know, uh, looking at a girl's ass or feeling anger or visiting a porn site. Someone wrote to me last week and said, um, you know, I'm struggling, my girlfriend's away and I'm struggling with porn. And I just said, well, it's just something, you know, you've got to try and contract, see it as a vice and try and contract it. But don't mangle yourself, don't beat yourself up. You're writing to me because you've been instructed. You've got this feeling of guilt, you've been instructed, move, move, um, move away from it and just don't keep making the same mistake. Other people write to me because they are full of anger, they're full of violence, they, someone's offended them and they want to go out and do something. And I say, I understand that because I have it myself. You know, even as recently as two weeks ago, I've, I've felt oh, such rage, such anger, probably more than I've ever felt in my whole life. Um, and the way I dissolved that was by going into myself and communicating with myself and giving it over to God, giving it over to the universe. Um, and if I'd have went out and if I'd have en enacted that rage, I would have ended up really damaging somebody. Um, and then that's going to put me back a long way. But even that, if I did that and I made the mistake, I'd have to forgive myself that because that's how I'm being instructed. I'm being instructed through my mistakes. What they do with a guided missile is what Peter Constein told me. And another thing he said to me was, uh, sometimes, Jeff, it just beats you. Sometimes the arousal beats you, sometimes the anger beats you, sometimes the jealousy beats you, sometimes the rage beats you, sometimes the judgment beats you, sometimes the envy beats you, sometimes the anti-virtues, they beat you. You have days when they beat you. If it wasn't, if you didn't have days when you were beaten, then you're not in the right arena. When I was at the judo, I would come out some days and I say to Sharon, I just got battered by a green belt. I was mangled by a green belt. And I just said, I don't know how that's happened. How did that happen? And she said, I thought you wanted to get good. I said, I do want to get good. She said, then some days you're going to get beat and some days you're going to get beat a lot. And I was at the wrestling. Went over to the wrestling. I thought I'm going to improve my wrestling. I went over Birmingham. I chose the biggest guy in the class. I thought I'll go to the biggest person first. I'll take the biggest challenge. This guy could bench press 400 pound. Um, and he was the European heavy, super heavyweight champion. But I was okay, I was a fighter. I could, I could deal with this. I went over, I started wrestling with him. He literally picked me up above his head. He picked me up above his head and held me. And I felt him twitch as though he was gonna drop me. <laughs> and he just gently put me back down again. And I went home and thought, I'm not as good as I thought I was. Um, and I got beaten in that class you know, pretty much every session for almost a year. Same as at the judo class. When I was at the judo class, I was getting beaten so often that Neil Adams stopped the class and said, please take it easy on Jeff. Towards the end, I was catching people and I was doing really well. But it's no, it's no different. It's no different with the senses. The senses are the most challenging aspect of our life. 
Um, the sense is what we need to curtail. If we want to expand our consciousness, we need to curtail the senses. Some days it's going to batter you. Like I said, two weeks ago I got battered. You know, a week ago I felt jealousy. Um, you know, a month ago, you know, arousal overtook me. I mean, if you get a chance to look at my play, um, um, which one was it? Fragile. Get a chance to look at Fragile. Yeah, <laughs> you can't watch it anymore because it's not on, but you can read it. Um, that's that's about me saying, look, these are all the times where this is a play about. It's about me and about lots of other people that have written to me. But it's saying these are the times that my senses have beaten me. If your senses aren't beating you some days, it's because you're you're in the wrong arena. It is going to beat you. You are going to have moments when it beats you. You are going to have moments when you're going to tap out. If you're not in a class where you're being tapped out, you're in the wrong class. I had a student of mine saying to me, said to me once, I haven't been tapped out for a month. And I said to him, that is because you're in the wrong class. If you're in the right class, you get tapped out every session. Everybody does. So the senses are, the, are our greatest challenge. And if, they, if we get tapped out and we make a mistake, we need to forgive ourselves. We need to forgive ourselves the same as we would forgive anybody else. This is one of the reasons I don't judge people that attack me. Because I make so many mistakes myself. I make so many errors myself. I do so many things wrong. I'm not battering myself here now. I'm just saying to you that, you know, we are, this is the human condition. You know, and it is human to err. And obviously we don't want to keep making the same mistakes all the time. But we are going to make mistakes. And if we if we expect too much of ourselves is because we're not giving enough over to God. For me, it's about, you know, probably on a daily basis saying to God, I'm in this position, I'm writing this script, I've got this problem, I have this issue, um, I have this challenge and I don't know what to do, I'm lost, I don't know what to do. Please come forward, please show me how to work this. Um, and that's what God's guided me with today on this video. Um, when I was reading Gandhi last week and it was a revelation because he was just saying it is human to err, you know, we can't be perfect. We need to be instructed and then we need to move on. And remember the biggest thing I've learned when I sat in the room with this particular rage and I quashed it and when I got beat recently by sexual arousal, um, uh, I the biggest thing I learned from it was that the instruction is not coming from another person. The instruction is coming from the divine. It's coming from God. When I'm at my weakest, I'm at my strongest. This is something I said to somebody recently. If somebody was trying to talk to me like I'm some kind of saint, like I'm some kind of perfect person, I said to them, don't, don't be in too much of a hurry to place that on me because I'm still capable of killing somebody. I still feel rage at times. Um, and I remember reading Francis of Assisi. Someone said to Francis, "We're going to that we're going to make you into a saint." He said, "Don't make me into a saint. I'm still capable of fathering a child." Francis of Assisi had a real problem with sexual arousal, but the senses can come in lots of different ways, and they attack in lots of different ways. But if we can, um, if we can work with the senses and not give in to the senses, we will expand exponentially. So this is just saying to all you people out there who are beating themselves up, who are feeling bad, who are feeling um, unworthy, who are feeling like they're a piece of shit, who are feeling guilty, who are feeling shame, give yourself a break. You know, let yourself off. Learn from your mistakes, move on. Everybody makes mistakes. If you're not making mistakes, you're not in the arena. I hope, <laughs> I hope this helps you as much as it's helping me. God bless you.